Good afternoon. We know many of you may be joining us from very different time zones, so we hope we covered everything. Um, we are going to be going through the housing application process this evening um, here in Spider Time with you today. Um, we're going to try to cover as much information as possible in about 20 to 25 minutes. It's going to be very informative. Um, we ask that you um, utilize the Q&A function during the um, presentation. We will get to the Q&A function after we are done with our presentation. So if you want to hold on to your questions until um, we get through things, you are able to do so. And also in the Q&A function, if you see a question that is something that resonates with you, you can also give it a thumbs up. So that way it will jump up higher in the queue for us to get to. We will do our best to get to every question um, later, um, but we might not be able to. And if we cannot, you can always contact us in the office by going to our website and looking up our contact information. All right. So without further ado, we are going to get started. Um, well, my name is Patrick Binner. I serve as the Director for Residence Life and Housing here at the University of Richmond. I've been with the university for nearly, actually over two decades at this point. And I've been the director since the office was formed in January of 2017. And I'm joined by my colleague. Hi everyone, my name is Ashley Owens and I am currently the Associate Director for Residence Life. And I have been at the university for two years now. And Taylor Walsh is our other associate director who could not join us tonight as she is under the weather. So we are going to do our best to fill in for her on all of her mastery um, behind the things that she is most well known for um, in our office, which is all things the housing application process. So I just wanted to highlight um, real quickly for you all our mission, values, and vision. Um, we look to foster community by celebrating the individual students. We do that by encouraging personal growth and development that embraces inclusion, encourages responsible leadership and promotes intellectual community. Our values are connections, community, inclusivity and support. And those are woven throughout our programming themes. Um, that is something that you will learn to be a part of that actually will highlight the Richmond residential experience a little later in our session. And a portion of our vision that I wanted to point out for you is very key is that we support the co-curricular development of all our residential students while creating a sense of belonging in the spider community. All right. So as you all know, there are plenty of benefits of living at the University of Richmond on campus. Um, some ways in which our services are unique um, outside of other institutions Around 99% of first year class lives on campus and 93% of them live on campus for the entire all four years of their career here. So we have RAs on campus and the ratio for RAs to first year residents is very low and allows for both group and individual connections to begin to occur very early in the year. So we have a really great ratio of about 25 residents to one student. The residential experience, as Patrick alluded to at U of R, can be um, customized by in each individual student based on what they want from their experience. Um, we have the Richmond Endeavor Program, SSIR, um, REAC, and diverse types of communities. There is cooperation across student support services um, and creates strong student support experiences. We are particularly um, really proud of our faculty and residence program. Um, which allows students to create connections with faculty members who live actually among them on campus. Um, faculty and residence members um, who have been paired with each residence hall provides events, programs, experiences in which they all can connect the students right where they live. Okay. All right, so we're gonna dive into the housing application process, the heart of our presentation today. Um, so the housing application is currently open in the Starrez portal, portal, excuse me. You can find the link here in this presentation. Um, and this is being recorded, so you'll be able to come back and see it, but it's also on our website. If you go to our website and you click on the housing tab, you will see um, uh, first year and entering students, new and entering students tab. And there's information there that is a uh, very good source of information, but we also keep the link embedded on that page for students to be able to access it very quickly. Um, 
Within the application, you'll find several important pieces of information and some vital steps to complete. The big thing and the first thing is you must sign your housing on your housing contract in order to be housed on campus. Without completing this step, you won't be sent a housing assignment. So if you only do one step in the housing application, make sure you sign your housing contract. Even if you stop there and don't complete anything else, you will be given a housing assignment. It will make it a little more difficult for us to pair you and match you with a roommate, but you will be given a housing assignment as an entering first year student. There are several other steps and pages within the application and it follows through step-by-step step and you'll hit the next button um, and save and continue. So make sure you complete everything. There are a lot of informational pages um, on various things um, such as requesting a housing accommodation through disability services. There is also information on how to sign up for gender flexible housing, which we will talk about a little bit later in this presentation. In the application, you will also be able to request your roommate and if you don't have a roommate, you will make sure you want to complete the housing lifestyle questions in the application so that we and you can utilize them to search for roommates. Um, and if you're able to use it to search for your roommates, um, if you still cannot find one, we will utilize it to automatically match you through an automated process based on a best match process within the system based on how you answered your questions. We always encourage, strongly, strongly encourage that the students complete the lifestyle questions and that you answer all those questions honestly. You might be thinking about how you study right now at home, at high school, or wherever you may be, but that can shift when you are in college and you're in your residence hall room. So think about how you normally study or things like how you go to sleep at night, what you do on the weekends, what you enjoy, your just various things. Make sure you answer all of those things honestly. Um, the roommate portal is gonna open on June 13th. So be sure to log back in to your application on that date so that you can create a roommate group or search through for any potential roommate matches. And I'll be covering that here shortly. I'm gonna go through some screenshots for you just so that you can understand what you may be seeing as you start to go through this. And some of you may have already started to go through this as the application has been open now for a little while, okay? So this is the welcome page. This is the very first page that you're going to see. It has a lot of information, including the timeline for the process. When you log in, you should see this page. You will see the red bar atop the cross, uh, across the top, where it says home and new entering application. You're gonna wanna click on the entering new application. That is what's going to get you started in the process for filling out your application. And once you are in the application, it's gonna walk you through step-by-step -step pages and you're gonna see another screenshot here where you'll be able to understand what that looks like. The very first part is gonna be signing your housing contract and another part is gonna be creating a roommate group. So one of the things that you're gonna see, as you can see across the top, there's the welcome, there's the instruction page, you have the ability to upload a photo, and et cetera, et cetera, as you're going through things, okay? When you get to the roommate instructions after you've completed things, you know, make sure you're creating a roommate group because um, it can be confusing. And if you don't follow each step exactly as they're outlined here, you know, because there is a time, lane, time frame when you have to accept things, okay? Requesting a roommate to, um, to join your roommate group is very similar to requesting to view a private social media page. You can request to have them join your roommate group and that they should go back in and accept your roommate request. So I may send a roommate request to Ashley, but if she doesn't answer it with three days, then that roommate request becomes void. If Ashley were to go in and try to accept it, she won't be allowed to. She would have to then create a roommate group herself and request for me to be able to um, be in that roommate group. If say for instance, somebody was traveling or unable to get to their computer for a couple of days, okay? You must make sure your roommate group is confirmed, okay? One thing that has to be done is your roommate group pairing has to be done through this portal. Meeting somebody on social media or connecting with them at your uh, a local event or maybe something you've done through admission or you've shared emails, um, does not equate to a roommate match within our system and we will not know that information. So make sure you get your roommate pairings done through this system. 
and that it is confirmed. You will receive and be able to see in the portal that it is confirmed, okay? If you're searching for a roommate, this is where the lifestyle questions are a very key factor and you can weigh the lifestyle questions that you want to search for that are more important to you. Um, so it is important, again, that you complete these lifestyle questions honestly. There's an example of some things here in front of you. This is just the first few questions. There are also questions that are asked about your preferences for sleep, studying, cleanliness, your use of alcohol, guests in your room, and many other things. It's about 15 to 18 questions that you will answer, and they're done on a Likert scale. From, I like to go to sleep at, as an example, 9 a.m., or I like to go to sleep at two, I mean, 9 p.m., excuse me, or I, like, I prefer to go to sleep around 2 a.m. in the morning. There's questions about what is late, staying up late to you, and it has a Likert of 10 p.m. or 12 a.m. or 2 a.m. or 4 a.m., so you may not match well with somebody who likes to stay up until 4 a.m. and you want to go to bed by 10 p.m. So make sure you're paying attention to those things and answering those questions honestly. You're gonna be able to search for roommates and match based off of your profile. It will give you percentages of how well you do match, okay? Um, but you will also notice in the housing application that there is no place for preference for a building. We are gonna cover the building uh, locations here shortly, but first year students are not able to choose which building they live in. All of the assignments for first year entering students are done randomly in all of our first year buildings. Okay. Right. So the first year residence halls, um, there are there's Dennis Hall, Laura Robbins Court, Marsh Hall, Moore Hall, Robbins Hall, and Wood Hall. Um, Almost all of these residence halls have undergone a significant renovation in the last five years. If they haven't gone through a renovation in the last five years, they've certainly received upgrades to each of the buildings. All of the buildings with the exception of Dennis Hall have wood laminate flooring in the rooms. Dennis Hall is still carpeted in the bedrooms at this time and will be for next year. That's the only difference between the buildings. Um, they're all first year residence halls are co-ed by floor section or pod. And if you look at the floor plans, as you're all able to um, on our website, you'll be able to see kind of how some of the buildings are broken up, um, where the buildings do um, allow for um, co-ed by floor. Some have broken up sections as there's uh, different turns and layouts where they're broken up by floors and things of that nature, and as well as the pods, um, which are um, primarily in Laura Robbins Court. You'll, you'll hear them um, referred to as the A, B, and C pods within the buildings. All of our residence halls, including our first year residence halls, have air conditioning and they all have individual fan coil units in each room. Every student has the ability to control the air conditioning and the heat within their rooms. Um, there are times, because all of our buildings are on two pipe systems, this might be a little too much information, but I'll share it anyway. Um, where during the year we do have the building set to air conditioning based on the temperatures outside and at night. And then we do flip the buildings over to heat. And so when they are within the air conditioning um, control zones, you are able to control the air conditioning. When they're in the heat control zones, you're able to control the heat within the room. You can't freely flip your building, your room back and forth to, to heat and air conditioning. We do monitor the temperatures inside the building as well as outside at night to make the determination on when those slips do occur so that students stay comfortable. Um, all of our buildings also have um, a new upgrade to them, which is a fresh air system where we are continuously pumping in fresh air into all of the residence halls and the buildings and the rooms at all times. And that building, that air is pulled into a system. It's pumped through a cooler and filtration system. So fresh air is always being pumped into the residence halls at all times, um, which has been a great amenity we've added in the last four to five years. Every residence hall has a laundry room as well as vending. And all of our residence halls have lounge and study spaces that are um, peppered and spaced throughout. Some have them on every floor, other ones have them every other floor, some of them have in designated locations within the building. All right, so these are some things that we want you all to check out um, on our website. And you can check these things out on our website when, we, when I stop sharing the screen and I get to um, the Q&A function, if I'm able to um, cut and paste these into um, 
the Q&A function, I will do that. I'm utilizing two screens right now, so I might not have the ability to do so. I'll do my best. Um, but we have virtual tours for all of our residence halls. Um, we partnered with a company two years ago to put these in place. They are very popular with our incoming students and our returning students and our, um, our families and parents because you can see a three-dimensional model and take a virtual tour of each of our residence hall rooms. It has measuring tape where you can actually see um, the length from the door to the bed, how big the window is, um, how high you can raise the bed up, the, the depth of the drawers. You can do just about anything with um, these tours. It's actually a really neat feature. It has what's known as kind of the, the dollhouse feature where you can see it three-dimensional from all different areas and kind of spin the room around. Um, but also there's designated spots where you can go from one corner to the room and kind of flip the camera around and see things. So make sure you do check these things out, um, especially when you get your um, room assignment, which will be later in the summer. So you'll be able to see any virtual tour. It's a standard double room in each of our first year residence halls. Um, all the furniture that's provided, again, I'll put this in the, the chat a little bit later, um, but you'll be able to see all the dimensions for our furniture. You can see the dimensions um, within the virtual tour, but I'll also make sure that you see the link. It is on our website under um, uh, services. You'll see a services tab and you'll see facilities and furniture. If you click on that tab, you'll be able to see all, each of the pieces of furniture that are in your room, as well as those dimensions. Um, we know that's something that people look for and want to know because they may want to bring additional items to their room. Speaking of additional items, we also have a list on our website of items that you can bring to the university. They are things that, are, that you're permitted to bring, but they're also items that we suggest that you do bring because we don't provide every um, item within a room. So these are suggested items that you can bring to the room. You will also notice on that same page or that you would click to find the items to bring, there are prohibited items. These are things that are against policy. Mostly these are things are against our fire safety policy. Um, and it's just an overall general safety guidelines that things are not permitted and they're not allowed. And we do um, complete fire safety inspections um, at least two times throughout the year. And those are unannounced where we are looking for these prohibited items. So make sure you make note of these things and that you do not bring these items to campus. And also we want you to follow us on Instagram. Um, we started an Instagram page earlier this year, and we will be putting um, updates throughout the summer and later in the summer as we get closer to move in and arrival and we put things in here throughout the year, um, highlighting programs and upcoming events and announcements um, for things to come. So there are additional housing options and um, we have substance free housing. Substance free housing is for students who do not utilize drugs or alcohol. Now it is illegal for any student under the age of 21 to consume or possess alcohol and students under the age of 21 are prohibited to have or partake of in, in alcohol. We acknowledge that some students will still choose to utilize drugs or alcohol. We do offer substance free housing for the students and they can request this through the application. In the application, you'll need to indicate that you want to participate in substance free housing and you will also need to select drinking is unnecessary in the lifestyle question um, area portion that Patrick mentioned earlier. If you do not, then you won't be housed in substance free housing. So also, if you have a roommate group and your roommate has selected, I mean, has not selected both, as well as your roommate group will be split up in favor of substance free housing. So please be sure to communicate openly with your roommate about all of these things. We have gender flexible housing. So we offer gender flexible housing for students who want to live with a student of another gender. Students who want gender flexible housing need to complete their housing application and their gender flexible housing form. This form is found on our website. We will not place you in gender flexible housing if you haven't done both. This is a housing option that you need to opt into. You must be at least 18 years old to live in gender flexible housing. We do recommend that you have a roommate whom you want to live with, but obviously as a first year student, you might not know anyone else um, attending the university. You can still complete the housing application and the supplemental gender flexible housing form and we will work with you to, to the best of our ability to house you in the most comfortable living situation for you. The gender flexible housing form is currently open on our website and will close on July 5th. And then lastly, um, Endeavor is a living learning program for first year students. These students arrive to campus early and participate in classroom and residential experiences tailored to their area of interest. 
In addition to the housing application, you will have to apply to participate through the new Student in Transition Programs Office. Students who are accepted will live together in the same residence hall and will be able to select roommates who are also in the Endeavor program through the roommate portal when it opens. All right, so here's just some, um, it's a little bit of closing information before we kind of jump into the Q&A. Um, this is the housing application timeline. The application is open, okay? Uh, the key things to pay attention to are what are the upcoming dates, June 13th. Um, is when the roommate portal is going to open. It will open at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on June 13th. And as, if you've already completed everything up until then, then you can just hop back in and start to um, look for a roommate, match the roommate, and complete your roommate groups, okay? Um, so that'll be the next time to get in there and kind of get things going, okay? The application will close on July 5th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again times are all like with Eastern Standard Time. So we'll keep it open until 11.59 p.m. on July 5th. Once the application closes, um, we will be getting housing assignments out to the people who have completed their housing application. And they will be sent to your University of Richmond email address on July 18th. So make sure you're monitoring your U of R email address. And then if you aren't already monitoring that um, through announcements you're getting, please start to monitor that because that is where your your housing assignment will be sent to you. Um, and also in that assignment email, you will see information regarding move-in. That'll be the first time that we start to share information about move-in that isn't already on our website. Um, but people will be signing up for time slots for move-in on the days that they are permitted to come to campus for move-in, okay? All right, so now we are gonna jump into the Q&A function, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen because I did promise to you all I was going to, let me now get out of this so I can see um, my other document to put a few things in the Q&A function real fast before we start getting into things. I have way too many windows open. My apologies. All right. Um, I'm gonna do a big cut and paste here. Now I'll start diving into the questions. Okay, Let's see if I can't figure out. All right, so I will start going through the questions and I will bounce some of these. I'll answer some of them, but I'll also probably bounce some of these to Ashley. Um, are there bathrooms in the dorms and does each dorm have a communal restroom? Yes, good question. Um, each of our first year residence halls um, are um, known as traditional style residence halls. They're double, mostly double loaded corridors um, with some triple rooms where there are community restrooms. Um, they are gender identified restrooms that have uh, various numbers of um, showers, sinks and commodes within them. But then they're also, um, uh, private all gender ADA restrooms, single use restrooms um, in each of our residence halls. Some have more than others, um, but they are also available in our first year residence halls um, as well. Our, our parents have to sign the housing contract or do the students? The students need to sign um, the housing contracts, okay? Um, I'm going to type in an answer for this next question that y'all may see in the chat is what are the lengths of the beds? I'm going to um, cut and paste a lot of information into here, um, but you will be able to see um, some information about the lengths of the desks on our website, okay? So it has the dimensions of height, depth, and the number of drawers. And there are some variances in um, the residence halls, um, depending on which building you're in. There are two different styles of furniture. Um, so make sure you're looking at which residence hall you may be assigned to um, because there are two different styles and different dimensions for each of those sets of furniture um, within the system, okay? Um, if my son chooses um, to let UR match them, will he still have to do anything else when the roommate portal opens or will he automatically be matched? Good question. You will automatically be matched. Um, and what our automated process does is it goes in and it's a uh, 
very large equation set up by our Starres um, colleagues where they look for the best possible match that is remaining, um, knowing that people that have already paired with other roommates, those individuals can't be chosen, but they'll find the next best match um, for the students based on how those lifestyle questions could be answered. Um, and it's based on percentages, okay? Um, are students allowed to choose if they want a double or triple room? Good question. Um, students that want to be in a triple room can form a roommate group of three individuals, okay? That is how students that are in a roommate group of three will be placed in a triple room. We do get that every year um, where students want to be in our triple room because if you um, look at that, it just could be an option people want. Um, if you're in a roommate group of two, odds are you're gonna be placed in a double room. Um, we do have triple rooms available and they are used. And so we have to utilize all of our spaces. So, um, and students are randomly placed between double and triple rooms within the residence halls. So any student could be placed within a double or triple room. You don't have the ability to choose. Um, and it does sometimes happen depend on the number that there could be two students who have paired together and chosen to be roommates. And there is an, another student who um, has not have a chosen roommate, but a match is available. And those three individuals may be placed in a triple room. Um, if you apply for Endeavor, how does that housing process change? Good question. The only change that occurs for Endeavor students is um, within the portal, once all the identified Endeavor students have committed and we know who they are and we, are, we work with the Office of Living Learning, we put a um, what is known as a flag or a marker on each of those students within the system. So when the roommate portal opens, only students that are in Endeavor can see other Endeavor students to match with and to be roommates with. Um, so that is the only difference in how that process changes. And all Endeavor students are assigned to live in Laura Robbins courts because the students live there as a cohort because there is a classroom in that residence hall and that classroom is utilized by some of the faculty who teach in the Endeavor program. Um, next question is for international students. Um, who decide to remain on campus during the summer after freshman year, will we be moved to different accommodations for those few months or allowed to stay in our first year residence hall room? Good question. This applies to every student, whether you are international or a domestic student. Um, for our summer housing, any student that is here on campus um, that has a on-campus job, is doing an internship in the Richmond area, is a UR Richmond summer fellow, and or taking summer courses will live on campus, um, either within our residence halls or within our apartment complex. Um, it depends on space availability every summer, but yes, each of those students are reassigned to another location during the summer. We try to make the moves as minimal as possible. Um, this summer, in fact, the students are only having to move twice, once from their spring assignment, which is their academic year, into their summer assignment, and then from their summer assignment into their fall. It doesn't always work out that way. We may have to use some temporary housing, but that all depends on what projects we are doing um, on campus and what residence halls may be avoided. How do we view recordings of these? Um, I think they are all housed on the New Spiders website, and I will ask my colleague who is assisting this in the background to maybe answer that with a typed in answer for me. Okay. All right, next question is, I'm guessing this is on the website, but are any appliances provided um, in the room like refrigerators or microwaves? Um, no, those items are not provided. Um, many students will um, make their arrangements to get those and work with their roommates. But we also do have a um, rental company that we work with and that, that information is on our website where you can rent a micro fridge through um, what is known as Dorms Direct but you can also rent several items from them. They have what are the permitted futons and size and length. They also offer um, safes, they have bed rails, they have extra padding, they have headboards. They have a great many number of things that we've worked with and partnered with them on. Um, 
that many students enjoy. So be sure to check that out because um, that can be some, some cost savings um, for you as well. Okay. Um, if you've already found a roommate, can we sign up prior to June 13th? No, you cannot. Um, you'll have to wait until the portal opens. So just make sure you mark your calendars and one of you goes into the system, creates the roommate group, sends the message through the portal to that individual. And if you're already sharing things through social media or doing text exchanges, make sure you send them that prompt reminder saying, please go into the portal and complete our roommate group so that we will be confirmed as a roommate pairing. Can you change your preferences? Yes, you do have the ability to go back into um, your preferences and adjust those preferences. Um, but once we have made the roommate assignments, you know, you can, you can change them at any point in time, but once those roommate assignments are done, that's what we look at for things. We do encourage students because um, they could be looking after their first year where um, they're looking for different roommates um, going into their second year. Um, so we make sure that they update their um, uh, assignments, uh, excuse me, their lifestyle preferences, because after you go through your first semester at um, college, maybe your sleep habits have changed, your study habits have changed and things of that nature. Um, what percent of students choose their roommates um, or go random? That's a good question. Um, it fluctuates a little bit every year, but roughly I would say about 60% of our students um, do select a roommate through the portal, either they know somebody or they go through the portal and find a match based on lifestyle questions where roughly 40% um, just are completely okay. And that's what they wanna do by going into college, just by having a, a roommate assigned to them. If you do want to be able to be found through the roommate portal search, you do need to check a box in the application that says view in roommate search. So if you do not check that box, you will not be able to be seen in the roommate portal for a search. And that is also what students don't check that box because they would rather have a random roommate assigned to them. It's just done through a matching process. Um, next question is, I think, is there storage room under all the beds? Meaning are all the beds raised? Um, and if they cannot be raised, um, it helps for storage vents. So each of our beds, um, if you do the virtual tour and you look at the, the furniture, um, the, the new beds that we are utilizing, um, first of all, they're all 68, um, <laughs> sorry, six foot eight um, in length. Um, so they are a very long twin extra large and they do rise up to at least three feet of clearance. So depending on what type of furniture, some of the dressers do fit under the beds um, and other students will do will bring storage bins and students do utilize by raising the beds all the way up um, to that three foot height to be able to store things under the bed. Um, with dorms direct, you also have the ability to um, rent lofts because um, students might choose to rent a loft um, to create more space within their room, um, which will allow you to loft your bed um, and either slide your desk and your dresser underneath that loft, or if you choose to put a futon in the room, things like that. Is there indoor bike storage on campus? No, there is not. Um, we do have um, bike storage um, and areas on each side of campus. Um, some of them are covered through um, walking um, pathways um, while others are external to the building. Some students, um, just because of the, uh, the sure nature and cost of their bikes, do keep their bicycles um, in their rooms, um, but um, there are not separate rooms within the residence halls for those storage. Um, additional question is just to clarify, are Endeavor students um, in separate housing automatically. So um, all Endeavor students will be housed in Laura Robbins Court. There are also non-Endeavor students that are placed within that residence hall. That is our largest um, first year residence hall that we have on campus. Um, so we wanna make sure that we are able to house all of the students that are interested in being Endeavor in that program because approximately um, anywhere from two to 240 students in the first year class may enroll um, in the Endeavor program. Does the university have any storage available for students' belongings over the summer between first and second year? We do not have on-campus storage for students 
We do, however, on our website, um, if you do some digging, um, you will see that we have three companies that we work with here locally that will store items off campus. They will come to campus and pick them up. They may even come and box them up for you. There's different rates for everything. So you can check those things out between first and second year. Is there a way for any first year to have the Jack and Jill set up? I think what you're referring to in this question is the suite style arrangements. No, there are none of those um, bathroom arrangements in our first year residence halls. All of our first year residence halls have community style restrooms. Um, but as I also mentioned, in some floors, pods, but also in every building, there is a single stall use um, restroom. Some are ADA compliant, some are all gender. Um, they just vary from building to building. Um, at what time will residences open on August 14th? Good questions. That will be the first day of move-in. There are two days of move-in, August 14th and August 17th. And each of those days will start at 9 a.m. Um, but again, we will be doing, uh, sending out the information where students will be able to sign up for time slots for them to move in because we can't have all students showing up um, between 8.30 and 9 and trying to get you know, 800 plus students um, through the line. So we space students out throughout the day just to make things easier on everybody. Um, is it possible to ship stuff to Richmond for storage over the summer or use a service like dorm room movers to get our stuff on campus? What you are able to do after you receive your, um, your assignment for summer, you will also receive after that shortly after that from our post office, you will receive your UR box number. And there will be information that will be posted and shared about shipping bulk items to campus in advance. So be on the lookout for that information where you're able to ship bulk items in advance to campus and you'll be able to pick those up at a set location on your designated move-in day. Okay, wow, we flew through those. Ashley, thank you so much for answering a couple of them on the side. I'm a little hoarse now. <laughs> All right, one more just came in. Um, as an international student, if I have um, a lot of stuff, is there storage room available or for rent? Um, there is a few residence halls and first year buildings, excuse me, a few spaces in first year buildings where there are storage rooms, okay? Um, it just depends on the building um, and the layout of that building. Um, like for instance, instance um, in Laura Robbins Court, um, the way those buildings are set up, those closets are set up, there's actually storage above the closets that students will utilize that storage that's in their room. So Laura Robbins doesn't have a storage room, but there are storage rooms um, in the other first year residence halls. They, are not very large and not a lot of students utilize them. So space is limited. Next question that came in is if we do a pre program, I'm assuming a transition program is move in a few days earlier. For all students that are going to be accepted into a transition program, your move in day will be on Sunday, August 14th. Any student who is not doing a transition program, um, that, those, that move in day is going to be Wednesday, August 17th. Um, in the housing application, is there an option for being in a single room or is it random? So our first year residence halls, there are a few single rooms that are within those spaces. Those rooms are held out for students that are approved through our accommodation process through disability services. Typically, each of those spaces are taken up through that process. But if there are single rooms that are left over afterwards, that assignment would be random, that it is um, highly unlikely that those spaces would be available after we go through students that may need accommodations that are approved through disability services. Question that just came through, it, that is correct. So only transition students moving on the 14th, all other students, um, not Endeavor students will move in on the 14th. Endeavor is gonna be considered one of the transition programs, okay? Um, so you will get more information about that once we um, get to those. 
What happens if a roommate is incompatible? Ashley, do you want to answer this question? Yes, absolutely. Um, this is definitely something that is going to happen. If not, will may happen. Um, if roommates are incompatible, um, you have a lot of options. Um, there's an RA that is available to you to help you discuss potential issues of why you are not compatible. Um, and there is a room change process that um, is allowed to students to reach out to their area coordinators to figure out what are other options, um, other roommates that might be more compatible for you. But there are resources for you and there are support for you as well. This is a, 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 another question that came in about roommate preferences. Yes, um, you still have the ability to adjust your roommate preferences, uh, but once assignments are out and we um, the application closes on the 5th, um, your your preferences are locked in. Um, can I confirm the move-in date for the general population students? So any students who are not participating in any transition program, um, your move-in date will be Wednesday, August 17th. All right, I think we have a few more minutes to answer a couple more questions if anything pops up. Good question. How many students um, normally join? Um, I think actually, I don't know if you just type something, but um, it averages around 200. Um, but I think um, we're, we're expecting a little higher number this year. So maybe between 200 and 240 students. Do I suggest transition programs? I think um, the best thing to do is to look at the um, living and learning um, in, uh, Endeavor website um, to check out those transition programs. You can also see that information through the new spiders portal of all those offerings to look at and see what might be best for you and for your students um, to do. You're very welcome. <laughs> Okay, the next question is, I hope to be in the Endeavor program and found a roommate. Um, do we both just apply and wait for an answer? Yes, so what you need to do is just to ensure that if you're connecting with that, that roommate uh, that you want to live with, that you both um, apply for the Endeavor program. You don't have to be the exact same Endeavor program. There are several classes within the Endeavor program and you can choose to be with anybody who's in any class um, as long as they are an Endeavor student. But as I said earlier, just so everyone knows, if you are an Endeavor student and you have met another student who wants to be a roommate of yours, you will not be able to see them in the roommate portal. So if your preference is to be with that individual, you will have to um, cancel your um, connection with Endeavor by contacting that office so that you can be matched. All right. Question just popped up, how do roommate groups work? Ashley, you got that one or no? Yes, so um, if a roommate, I mean, if you all have decided to room with certain individuals, um, roommate groups will be placed um, based on, you know, availability and where we would place you amongst the first year residence halls. Um, so you all have to kind of agree to live with one another and place each other in the um, application. And for laundry, um, laundry is connected to your, um, your room rate and it is done through your ID card, your spider card. So students will be able to swipe into a system, choose a washer, connect to that washer, put their clothes in and that's done and they connect through the system and they use a dryer for that. So there's no additional money that's needed. All right. So sorry, can you repeat the last part about Endeavor and deselecting an option to show up? Um, Ashley, let me take that one. Yes, so if you um, no longer want to um, be selected into the Endeavor, Endeavor program, you need to reach out to that office so that you can show up in the housing portal um, so that another individual can select you in order to room with you for the year. So you make sure you have to reach out to the, um, the Office of New Student Transitions. Okay. 
Okay. Mentioned renting a loft. Can you explain that process again. So if we have a, a company that we work with. Sorry, I'm having some bad lighting because of the sun right now. Um, we work with a company called Dorms Direct, and you would you would connect with them um, through their online application process um, to request to rent a loft. And if you do get a loft with them, they will have the loft in the room prior to your arrival and move in, and the bed will already be placed on that loft for you. Um, and then they come and remove it after you move out at the end of the year. Right. So for the roommate groups, we mean um, if you're trying to live in the same room with another person. Um, so if you're in a group of four and you all want to live in the same building, that is different. Um, so we're looking for roommate groups for folks who want to live in the same room amongst each other. All right, I got one more question. I think we're gonna pause for the night. If you have additional questions, make sure you do reach out to our office. Our email is residencelife at richmond.edu and we will get back to you as soon as we are able. The last question is, what is meant by your roommate group? Um, so um, students are able to go into the system and create a roommate group. And that portal opens on June 13th. And um, if I wanted to live with another student, I need to contact that student through the portal. That student then has three days to accept my invitation. If they do not accept that invitation within three days, that roommate group will not be confirmed. I can then resend it to them. But in order for my roommate group to be confirmed, my invitation has to be okay. All right. Well, thank you all very much for joining us this evening. Ashley, you have any final words to add? No, thank you all and have a great night. Okay. Everyone take care. We'll see you in August.